Hello everyone. I am Dr. Amit, Professor, Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery, Mahatma Gandhi Dental College. Today, in this video lecture, we are discussing about Leafort fractures. So basically, Leafort fractures are fractures of the maxilla or we can say mid face, which is a very weak weak, weak bone. But there are certain area of strength or pillar which bears the all the forces in this maxillary region. These are called as vertical and horizontal buttresses. So vertical buttresses are three in number: anterior, middle, and posterior buttresses, named as nasomaxillary, zygomaticomaxillary, and pterygomaxillary. Horizontal buttresses again three: superior one, supraorbital rim; middle one, zygomatic; and inferior is the occlusion and palatal bone buttresses. Otherwise, remaining maxilla is very weak in the structure and articulations, which it can be easily fractured. The fracture classification most popularly used is the Leeford fracture classification given by Rene Leeford in 1901. It is Leeford 1 that is low level or Gurian fracture, Leeford 2 or pyramidal or subzygomatic fracture, and Leeford 3 that is the transverse and sup or suprazygomatic fracture. The main disadvantage with Leeford fracture is it is very old system where low velocity trauma was used to detect these fractures. Nowadays, more of the high speed and high impact road traffic accidents are the main causes. So mostly what we see in day to day practice nowadays is the overlapping of these fractures. Coming to the fracture lines one by one, Leeford 1 fracture is the horizontal fracture above the level of the nasal floor as visible in the diagram. The fracture line extends the lateral margin of anterior nasal aperture below the zygomatic buttress it crosses to the lower third of pterygoid lamellae. Also passes along the lateral wall of nose and lower third of nasal septum to join the lateral fracture line behind the tuberosity area. Leeford 2 fracture line it starts from the thin middle area of the nasal bone down on either side into the lateral wall of orbit crossing the frontal process of maxilla medial wall of orbit then the lacrimal bone behind the lacrimal sac and then turn down anteriorly into the infraorbital rim and crosses it either medial to or through the infraorbital foramen. From here it extends downwards and backwards across the lateral wall of antrum below the zygomaticomaxillary buttress and suture and divides the pterygoid plate at the half level. Separation of the block from the base of skull is completed via nasal septum and may involve the anterior cranial fossa. Leeford 3 fracture line as visible in the diagram, it completely disjunctions the mid face from the base of skull. So fracture line run near the frontal nasal suture transverse backward parallel with the base of skull and involves the full depth of ethmoid bone including the cribbing from plate. Laterally proceeding within the orbit, the fracture line passes below the optic foramen and into the posterior limit of inferior orbital fissure where it line it extends into two directions, backwards across the pterygomaxillary fissure to reach to the roof of the pterygoid plates and laterally across the lateral wall of orbit and separating the zygomatic bone from the frontal bone. Some modification was done in this, this fracture by Marciani in 1993 that Leeford 1 divided again into 1A that is with multiple fragments. Leeford 2 classical pyramidal fracture and subtypes are 2A and 2B where associated with nasal bone fracture or NOE fracture. Leeford 3 classical is the craniofacial dissection and 3A and 3B again association of nasal bone fracture or NOE complex fracture. And another variety added is Leeford 4 fracture which is Leeford 2 or Leeford 3 fracture along with the fracture of cranial base and further add-ons are 4A, 4B and 4C in form of supraorbital rim anterior cranial fossa and the supraorbital rim, anterior cranial fossa and the orbital walls. So the, all the modification in the diagram, Leeford 1 and 1A, different varieties of classical 2, 2A and 2B. Similarly, 3 with nasal and NOE complex making it 3A and 3B and Leeford 4 with its modifications. Another classification is Eric's classification. According to the fracture line, it can be horizontal, pyramidal or transverse kind of fracture. Depending upon the relationship to the zygomatic bone, it can be subzygomatic or suprazygomatic fractures. According to level of fracture line, it can be low, mid or high level fractures. Schwenger's classified mid-face fracture into central, lateral and centrolateral compartments. 
रो एंड विलियम्स क्लासीफाई इज द मिड फेज फ्रैक्चर इन टू नॉट इन्वॉल्विंग अक्लूजन एंड इन्वॉल्विंग अक्लूजन इन्वॉल्विंग अक्लूजन इज सेम डेंटोलेट फ्रैक्चर सब जाइगोमेटिक एंड सुप्रा जाइगोमेटिक सब जाइगोमेटिक इज फर्दर लिफोर्ट वन एंड टू एंड सुप्रा जाइगोमेटिक इज लिफोर्ट थ्री वेर एज नॉन इन्वॉल्विंग द अक्लूजन कैन बी ऑफ सेंट्रल वेराइटी और लेट्रल वेराइटी सेंट्रल वेराइटी इज द आइडर नेजल बोन सेप्टम और एनओई एंड लेट्रल विल बी जेड एम सी the common etiologies are road traffic accident assault fall sports injuries industrial injuries clinical feature in leaf fort one is the free floating maxilla along with moon uh, there will be gurian sign in cases of leaf fort two fractures there will be some entire face will be swollen up called as moon face with circumorbital ecchymosis that is raccoon eyes or panda eyes subconjunctival hemorrhage chemosis with periorbital hematoma limited ocular movements or nasal bleeding and cs of rhinolia may be present these are the overlapping features if you come come to peculiar to leaf fort 2 there will be step deformity in the infraorbital margin and paresthesia of the cheek if peculiar to leaf fort 3 will be step deformity and fracture in the frontozygomatic suture area with alteration in the pupillary level and tenderness over the zygomatic arch and cs of rhinolia is also more common in these fractures for examination point of view nowadays ct scans are gold standard because the anatomy is complex and can be easily visualized in 3d with the help of ct scan otherwise pns radiograph or mid face or waters view radiograph are the choice in the past to read these radiographs certain lines are there called as trapnel and cabbell lines so which are represented on this radiograph another line something called as dolans line to read the our anatomy of the zm zygomatic area to see the fracture lines so this is all for this lecture uh, treatment part we will discuss somewhere in the next class thank you everyone